first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. And others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace, peace. We're back once again with Dr. Alim El Bay. Today's discussion is going to be on religious mythology versus spirituality, true spirituality. So we're going to jump right into it. So let's get into what the word religion really means. The word religion is derived from Latin in which that it means religio, which means to bind back or to link. The question is, what are you binding back to and what are you linking to? It is supposed to be to your higher self. In other words, to your Lord and personal Savior, your God, as we would say, your netter, your soul, your divine soul, the most high God in you. That's actually what you are binding yourself back to. So religion is good because it actually has the same meaning as yoga, in which that we call yoga, which means the union which actually what it's talking about is the lower self and higher self, the opposite forces, and the merging of those two forces. So it's the opposite, so it's the merger of the two opposite forces, or the union of the two opposite forces um, within the Temerian, Kemetic, or Kamal, Egyptian um, philosophy. It is known as Sematawi. Sematawi means to tie. All right, symbolic to the lower self and higher self, to, or to set, which is symbolic to the lower self, which we get the word Satan from, or set on. Hence, we also get sunset, as well as also to the higher self, which is Heru. Hence, we get the term horizon, the sun coming up over the horizon. All right, daylight. This is where we get these concepts from. So, when we're talking about religion, we're talking about the major world religions. We're talking about Christianity, which currently is said to be the largest, which has over 2 billion adherents. Now, what this means is that 
when we look and analyze Christianity, we have to really go in and decipher because it's actually what is referred to as pagan teachings. In other words, it's the people teachings. The word pagan means simply people's traditions. That's all it means. And it's not just people's traditions. It's the most ancient people traditions or the highest civilization that we still have that we can see and touch today, and that is the Pyramid and the Mound Builders, in which that has spread all over the world. In other words, the ancient mystery school, or what is known as Hakka or Herbak, which are the teachings of light, which it is which is the Metuneta or, or um, the hieroglyphic terminology. The word Christian come from Kuresani. Kuresani is a story in which that is told within the Book of Ani, which is part of the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night, Miss Noma, the Book of the Dead by Wallace E. Budge, in which that states that the soul, after it leaves the physical body, faces judgment. At this point, it is known as Ani, which is Anu, and it goes before or saw the great judge, and the heart is weighed against the feather on the scales of my yacht. And animate, which is this mixture of animal, mixture of animal, um, if the heart weighs more than the feather, then animus eats the heart. And the individual memories is destroyed. And they will come back into incarnation. In other words, they will have to reincarnate again without access to their past life, past life or past lives. Even though you still have access to it, but it would take you quite a bit of breathing exercises, kundalini to raise, and many other di- different things in order to activate what's called the Malfa God or the Madula Magada where the past lives of an individual is stored at and open up that personal Akashic records. But this is what this is symbolic to. So Christianity is based on the awakening of the soul and in most regards is talk about the soul after it leaves the body. So every time that you read about um, the various stories, especially in the New Testament, that's what it actually is referring to. When you talk about Jesus, Jesus, the name Jesus itself is Greco-Latin or Greco-Roman, in which that Jesus is actually taken from Jew and Zeus, Jupiter, which is um, the head deity within the Roman mythology and Zeus, who's the head deity within Greek or Grecian mythology, the two was combined by the Greco-Roman to make up the composite character known as Jesus from Jews, Zeus. And then Peter became the right-hand man. So this is where Jupiter and Zeus meet. So Peter becomes the right-hand man to Jesus. Okay, this is where this comes from. Peter is actually another form of the netter pata. In other words, Peter. Pata ra or pata re. This goes on to become Oscar at the Emmy at the Emmy Awards. And Oscar is actually a form of also. That's where that comes from. That's what that is talking about. So whenever you are talking about the most high God, you're talking about also, which is in a sense, the sleeping soul. And then when the soul is awakened, it becomes Heru. So hence, Heru is the son of Osa, which is simply the awakened soul, just like Jesus is the son of God. This is why they say that God um, is dead. What they're talking about is the soul inside of the pineal gland, 
is half asleep and is not resurrected until the Kundalini Shakti, which is all set, raised up from out of her bowl, which is the root or base chakra, the sacral bone area, to raise up through the 33 vertebrates. Hence, Jesus died at the age of 33. Hence, Alexander the Great died at the age of 33. Hence, Adam to David is 33 generations. From David to Jesus is 33 generations. This is the reason why you have 66 books in the Protestant Bible. Symbolic to the 33 vertebrates and the 31 plus 2 nerves of the spinal column. Hence, 31 plus 2 is 33. So, hence, 66. This is where this book of life comes from. This is what it is talking about. That, talking about actual, actually the physical body itself. This is why the book, the Holy Bible, Helios Biblios, the sun book, the sun pages, raw papyrus or raw paper raw, as it is known as, is referring to the physical body. It starts with the book of Genesis, your genealogy, your genes, and it ends with the book of Revelation which to reveal that which was encoded within your genealogy or your genes. So this is what this is all referring to. So as Aset, the Kundalini Shakti, the serpentine fire, raised up through those 33 vertebrates, through the um, seven chakras, to hit the seventh chakra, the last seal of the prophets, Muhammad, and to awaken Osar from his sleep, or dead state to resurrect him back to a ninety degree perpendicular level, hence he Heru becomes Hiram Abif as within Freemasonry. So the whole ceremonial ritual or of, of Freemasonry is based on the Hiram Abif slash Osarian mythology, which is talking about the awakening of the soul. Once again we talk about the soul being awakened within the body as well as also after the body. Preferably within the body This is why you go through the initiations And Freemasonry This is what this is supposed to be symbolic to So Christianity is talking about In its allegories The awakening of this Jesus This Heru character Which is the soul The awakened soul This is why Jesus had to ascend to his father Who art in heaven this is why Jesus said that he's the light of the world. Heru means light. The sun. The internal sun. Symbolic to the external sun. When we went to Mexico, my wife and I, um, we went to um, Cancun. And we was walking down the street. And one of the Masonic brothers, um, Mexican brother, he stopped me. And he asked me, he said, um, why do you you know, Believe in, you know, why do y'all, you know, believe in Jesus? He was talking about American, in particular the blacks. And I said, I said, I don't believe in it. I said, I know what you're talking about. I said, you're referring to the fact that Jesus is the sun in the sky and his 12 disciples are symbolic to the 12 zodiac signs. I said, well, internally, that's the pineal gland that sits at the center of the brain and the 12 pair of cranial nerves that sits around it. And he said, yes, yes, how you know? You, you, who told you? You, you? How you know that? You know, I said, I said, I said, I said, all of us are not ignorant. I said, a lot of us do know. You know, he said, but all the ones that I've met, they, they never knew. I said, well, I'm sure that you told them. And he started smiling. So the thing is, is that I said, so I think my wife said, well, um, do, um, do, I said, um, do, you know, the Mexicans know? Do they know here? He said, yes. He said, everyone knows that, that Jesus is symbolic to the sun and the 12 zodiac signs are symbolic to the, um, you know, to the 12 disciples. So that means that the religion of Catholicism, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, Papal State, when we see individuals who acknowledge, um, That school of thought of Christianity, they might not know what those particular Mexicans knew within K 
Cancun area. Now we're talking about they are there, but they see the rising or the rising of the sun March twenty first during the um spring equinox. Every March twenty first and the sun travels up the steps of the serpent to the center of what's called Chesanisa. So they have a greater understanding, overstanding, understanding of the astrological play that is taking place, as well as also the influence of the stars upon the physical body. They understand, overstand, understand that concept. What happens is, is that that concept is lost within Christianity because they, um, we are told not to study astrology. So we do not get the concept of as above, so below, as within, so without, which is the supreme axiom. We lose that concept. We are lost. And therefore, um, the stories are relegated down to historical facts, seemingly historical facts. Many believe that they are historical facts, you know, that... When you read the stories in the Bible, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, that that's what it is referring to is something in which that actually took place, the exact way in which that it states that it does. No metaphors, no parables, no allegories, no spiritual in-depth meaning behind the stories in which that is being conveyed. No morality or um, no morals to the story, as we would say. And they're sadly mistaken. And this is the problem in which that we have with people's various interpretations. And how you know that they are incorrect because you can use the supreme axiom as the meeting stick or the meeting rod in which that has above, so below, as within, so without. If not telling you, if they are not telling you the science of astrology or astrotheology and how it plays upon the physical body or physiology, the chemicals, the hormones, the endocrine glands, the seven chakras, the seven churches, the seven eyes of Allah, as they also refer to as, or the seven souls of Ra, or the seven Elohim, then they are not telling you the truth. And there's a lot of information which that is being missed. So when we look at Jesus we have to even take that concept further back to the Tamarian concept because we know that the Jesus, the creature, the created creature Jesus, allegedly came in con- um, came into being during the Council of Nicaea during 325 A.D. when Constantine and 319 bishops, one was excommunicated, that was Arian. So actually it was down to 318 bishops allegedly. Some say it was more. Depends on which historical book in which that you're getting. But supposedly, um, Jesus was a composite character of actually or saw, which once again is the sleeping or dead soul. Um, this is why or saw, um, other name is called caress, Christ, where it comes from, and which that caress means the mummified body of Osiris or saw. And the mummy wraps is talking about the pineal gland, the soul being embedded inside of the pineal gland. That is symbolic to the soul being sleep or half asleep or dead, as we would say. Because remember, sleep is the sister of death. So when they talk about it, they're talking about it synonymously. So don't get confused in the storyline. This is why it is said that Jesus had to die, had to be crucified for three days and three nights. All right. This is what this is talking about. This this is where this story goes and comes uh connected at for us, for those who study um the ancient Tamarian um books, such as the book of Husea, um, the book of coming forth by day and night, the coffin text, the pyramid text, and various other books and texts. Very necessary that we do so. All right, so 
when you look at Jesus also, his Aramaic name in Hebrew name is Yahshua or Yahushua, which means, O salvation, or O he who saves. All right? So when you look at Yahushua or Yahshua, Shu is the word in which that we have to focus on because in the Old Testament you had Yahweh. In the New Testament you have Yahshua or Yahshua. So Shu is added in now in the New Testament between Yah and Way to become Yahshua or Yahshua. However, in the Old Testament, Shu is not there. This is the same rendition in which that you'll see in the Old Kingdom dynasties of Egypt where you have Geb and Newt. Then later on you'll see the, de- um, the depictions or the metunata of Shu separating Geb and Newt. This is what this um, actually shows. So the Bible is based on that concept, and Geb and Newt are the mother and father of Osar, and Oset, and Set, and Nebhet. They are part of the Aganad, as well as also, if you add Atum, which is known as the Eonads, the nine Neturus. So you have Atum, Atum's first son, Shu, which is, we'll get this connection from in a second here, Tefnut, Newt, Geb, Osar, Set, Oset, Nebhet. So, those eight deities that grew forth from out of Atum, which symbolizes the light, also symbolizes the eight divine cells of mitosis that formed the physical body into existence. Cellular division, your blastular pores, that still remains. These are the same eight cells in your body that never changes your whole entire life, that remains and reside within the sacral bone area where the Kundalini energy um, bursts forth from. Those eight dividing cells of mitosis, some refer to it as the Kunta egg, or the black egg, the Akash, or the Akasha egg. That's what they're referring to. Melanin. Those eight divine cells of mitosis symbolizes melanin. Eight also symbolizes the connection between Shu or Yahshua, as we was talking about. Because eight on a periodical chart is oxygen. And eight protons eight neutrons, eight electrons, is oxygen. Well, according to the Kabbalistic writings of Alex Crawley, 777, he states that 888 in Geomantria of the Kabbalah, the numeral value of Jesus Christ is 888. So symbolize that Jesus Christ is the breath of life. And guess what? Shu, within the comedic teachings, is the breath of life, here personified. So when it says in the Old Testament that God blew into the nostrils of man and made man a living soul, it's talking about God blew Jesus, Yahshua, or Shu, into the nostrils of Atum, or man, and made it a living soul. Raw. So, this is what this actually is talking about. So, Jesus Christ is not a mythical created character from the Nicene Council that was produced approximately 2,000 years ago, but actually is the breath of life in which that is the inhale and exhalation that you do on a daily basis. Matter of fact, um, 25,928 times a day in a 24-hour span, you breathe in and out. That is the same as our solar system going around the 
central sun, Alcyon, or to the, excuse me, through the 12 zodiac signs every 25,928 years, or 25,920 years, or some say just 25,000 years, renewal of history, as it, on the very Elijah of Muhammad referred to it as in the Nation of Islam. That they also call it within the um, Nation of God's on Earth, the Holy Quran, which is, means a sun cycle. The word Holy Quran simply means a sun cycle or a sun chronicle, chronicle of time. Quran is where it is derived from the Grecian word chronicle, which means time, a span. Just like Heru becomes our, an hour within a measurement of time. Or saw becomes associated with time too, because in the Jewish calendar, um, or saw, or Esser is um, on the calendar. It's one of the months of the calendar. So this is what we have to understand, 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 and stand on. So Jesus is the heir personified, Shu, who is the first begotten son. This is why Jesus is known as the second Adam in the New Testament, because Shu is the second Adam. Yet, just like Jesus, the first begotten son. And Adam is spelled A-T-U-M instead of A-D-A-M. And as we know, that is connected to the A-T-O-M, which is talking about carbon. Hence the reason why in the Kabbalah, Adam is known as Adam Kadman. Adam Kadman is known as the heavenly man. But that is symbolic to the fact of the heavenly man, which is symbolic to light, etherean energy, or ether, etheric energy, slowing down, crystallizing to become matter. Same thing. When you look at the carbon atom, the sixth element on the periodical chart, this is the connection to the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, which says, he who knows um, the mark of the beast, his wisdom of man is talking about 666. Well, it's six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. It's talking about the physical body. You being a carbon being. Or a carbon-based being. If you're a European, carbon-based being. So this shows that carbon is the makeup. Now, when we're talking about melanin, that's actually what you're referring to, what you're talking about is carbon. This is actually what you are talking about. So this is the summary of Christianity, and it goes into Islam in a, in, in a similar fashion. When you look at Islam, Islam was actually an attempt to bring back the ancient mystery school system of Hakka, which is the teachings of Tahuti, or the seven principles of Tahuti. The seven principles of Tahuti, um, if you get the book, the Kabbalion, the three initiates, it tells you that you have first the law of mentalism, the law of correspondence, the law of rhythm, the law of vibration, the law of um, karma, which is cause and effect, the law of polarity, and the law of sex, gender. Those are the seven laws of Tahuti. Tahuti is where you get the deity known as Yahweh. Tahuti, other name was Ayan, Ayawa, Ayahu. And that becomes Yahuwah, which actually is the correct pronunciation of Yahweh is Yahuwah or Yahawa. Hawa is the Hebrew name for Eve, the mother of all living. So, Yahawa, or Eve, or Hawa, is also symbolic to the Shekinah within Hebrew, which is the feminine face of God, the mother goddess principle. In other words, the Kundalini, serpentine fire, the Kundalini Shakti. You have the Kundalini Shiva which is the soul. So 
the Kundalini Shakti symbolizes the Holy Spirit. This is why in your Bible it speaks about the fact that you can call Jesus accursed, you can take the Lord name God in vain, but you cannot blaspheme the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the life-giving essence of your physical body. It is the concentration of the universal life force principle in you. Is the whole universe in you concentrated? That is the Holy Spirit. That is the serpentine fire. 6,000 degrees temperature, just like the surface of the sun, raised up to over 2 million degrees when it gets to the head area. And being, and as a melanated being based on carbon, it's just like the burning bush in the Old Testament. It does not become consumed. That's what that burning bush was talking about, was the physical body. This is why another parable, another story within the Old Testament, in the um, five books of Moses, was talking about the serpent, in which that if anyone looked upon this serpent, they would receive healing instead of the sting, which would be death. And Moses formed this serpent, this bronze and serpent. This becomes the medical symbol on all of the hospitals throughout the country. This medical symbol is known as Uraeus. The Greek name is Caduceus. The top part of it is called Washashat. Washashat becomes Washita, which symbolizes the epitome of Tantra Kriya Yoga. In other words, of enlightenment. It is the sun disc with the wings. Malachi, the second chapter, the fourth chapter, the second verse, excuse me, where it says, the son of righteousness comes with healing in his wings. This is symbolic to the top portion of the medical symbol, which symbolizes healing. This is the same symbol that the third dynasty prime visor, prime minister, walked around with, who is known as Imhotep, which we have now. Imhotep coming into the scenario between Scorpio, which is Serac, and Sagittarius, which is Shu, which is known as Ophicius within the Greek terminology. This 13th disciple, or known as the 13th zodiac sign, is now coming into play as we go through the dark rift and pass through the four-time belt. And we now are in the fourth dimension, and on the other side of the four-time belt, we will exit and go into the fifth dimension. This is what this is all showing and being played out. Once again, astrological play, internal play. Scientists have found out that there are more than just two strands of DNA that is now becoming active. Some children are being born with three strands of DNA. There are African people right now who have all 12 strands of DNA, physically and 12 strands etherically, making it 24 strands. This is what we are transforming from Homo sapiens sapien to Homo Christos. The same as Christ. So we no longer would be Christ like or Christian. We would become the same as Christ. The same as Christos. The Christ. The awakened mummified body of Osiris, which is Heru. As we go from the age of Pisces, which is Sebek, into the age of Heru, the age of Aquarius. That's what this is all symbolic to. So, as we get into Islam, you have to understand that Islam actually is the order of Mayat. And originally, the pre-Arabians or pre-Islamic um, people worshipped the deity Alat. Alat is Amin Rayat, uh, Aminta. She's the consort of Amin Ra. And this is who was worshipped with a lot. Of course, later on becomes the daughter of Ra, 
or the daughter of Ura, which is the daughter of Allah. This is what this is talking about. However, she was the mother goddess principle, symbolic once again to that creative principle, that force, the mother of all living, which resides within you, which is the Kundalini Shakti force, the Shekinah, the Black Madonna, as she is shown throughout over 200 countries with her Christ child, which is the statuette actually originally of Osset and Heru, which becomes or set name becomes Mary, which actually her name in the ancient comedic teachings, if you go to Gerald Massey lectures, her name was Orset Mary. They took off the Orset and just kept Mary, M E R I, and changed it to M A R Y, and Heru became Jesus. So now it becomes the Black Madonna and Child throughout 200 countries throughout the world. But this is symbolic to the Kundalini energy raising up within each and every one of us to awaken that Christ child. Or saw who's half asleep, dead in the pineal gland to reawaken and is up to the mother principle, the nurturer, the comforter. And hence we get to Islam because it is said that Ahmed took on the name Muhammad. Muhammad never existed. The reason why we say that is because Muhammad was an Egyptian or Tamarian concept from Mu Hap Maat. Mu Hap Amat is what becomes the name Muhammad. Ahmed took that name as he ventured into Ethiopia to sit amongst his people, his cousins of Ethiopian descent, the Abyssinians or the ancient Kushites. And they taught him the ancient mystery school because we know that the Egyptians was nothing more than the colony of, of the Kushites or of the Ethiopians. This is even within Herodotus. Around 325 B.C., Herodotus taught that the Egyptians were a colony of Ethiopians and that they looked the same. Herodotus, for those who don't know, is the supposedly first European historian. And obviously he sat amongst the teachings of the ancient ones of the mystery school, the teachers there, just like all of the so-called European or Greece and Grecian scholars did, Euripides. Aristotle, Socrates, all of them sat at the feet of these ancient masters and learned. All right? For those who don't understand, get this song by Karis One. You must learn, and you will learn. So Islam, Ahmed, when we talk about Ahmed, Muhammad, this is where the name derives from. It's from happy. Mu, hat, ma'at. Mu means water. Hat is another name for happy. And ma'at is symbolic to truth, righteousness, justice, reciprocity, balance, order. Her seven principles, for she's the consort to Tahuti. So, Muhammad, that's where that name comes from. Later on, it was bastardized by the Catholic Church to be Baphomet. Because the Knight Templars, close connection to the Moors, to Saladin, to the Sufis, who taught them the remnants of the ancient mystery school, the Knights nice Templars. And because of that, because of that, the Catholic Church excommunicated the Knights Templars, and Jacques de Molay was burnt upside down on a cross. 
alive. This is the tale. So, when we talk about Islam, we're talking about not Arab origin, because we know that the original Arabs or the nomads were actually Ethiopians, Kushites, who went into um, Saudi Arabia, as it's now referred to as. But we know on the map that is Africa. The only thing which that separated is the Red Sea. And the Red Sea, um, thousands of years ago, was actually not there. It was much closer and smaller area. And there's certain parts in which that you actually was able to walk or cross. This is where the mythology of the story of Moses um, going across the waters of the Red Sea or Reed Sea with the Hebrews. All right, this is where this comes from. So when we're talking about this mythology, we have to really understand what we're talking about. And, you know, one thing I can say is if you don't understand, you will. Just keep listening. It start making sense to you. All right. Now, when we talk about Islam, you find that happy, which is Muhammad, with that name derived from, like we just said, bought Sarem, S-A-R-E-M, Sarem. Now, Sarem, the R and the L's in the Metuneta, in the Egyptian language, or the Temerian language, are interchangeable. The R's and the L's are interchangeable. You can read this in Wallace E. Budge, um, Egyptian hieroglyphics, um, and there's many other scholars who taught the same information. Raul Nefer, within his Ametunati volume 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as well as also Muata Ashby, Dr. Muata Ashby, in his Egyptian yoga, volume 1 and 2 specifically states that the R and the L letters are interchangeable. Matter of fact, the symbol for the L's and the R's is a lion, and the lion roars, and the roar makes the R sound. So this is how this is connected. The R's and the L's are interchangeable, and the symbol is a lion. So when we talk about Serem, you look at Salem, S-A-L-E-M, which becomes Salim. Salim becomes Salam or Islam. So it is said that happy bought Serem to the people. The happy, the Nile River God, deity, Netter, bought Serem, the sanctuary, the tears of Ra, to the people. This is what this means. All right, so Rem means the sanctuary. Sa means sanctuary. Rem, R-E-M, means the tears of the eye of Ra. So sanctuary is a place of peace. Tears of Ra. So the sanctuary or the place of peace of Ra, as it also means. So hence, Serem becomes Salem, Salam, become Islam, which means to surrender in peace. This is where these concepts come from. Go back and check. So, we really have to do more in-depth study and research. So we're not talking about a 1,400-year-old character 
or person by the name of Ahmed Ibn Abdullah Mustafa Alamin, who becomes Prophet Muhammad. Even in Sufism, Prophet Muhammad symbolizes the brilliant one or a state of brilliance because Prophet Muhammad is known within the Hadith as the last seal of the prophets. Within the Injils, the Gospels, in particular the book of Revelation, it says there are seven seals. Muhammad symbolizes the last seal of the prophets. Well, who are the other six? Because there are seven seals, according to the book of Injils, to the book of Revelation. Well, Adam is the first seal, symbolizing the genitalia, the root chakra. Noah is the second seal, symbolizing the navel chakra. So Adam symbolizes being made from the dust of the ground, hence semen. That's the dust of the ground, hence what forms man into existence, the semen, because it is said that the sperm controls the sex, male and female components of the physical body, the testosterone and the estrogen levels of the body. And, of course, it's not by itself. It is with the unison of the 23 chromosomes of the woman to do so. So 23 pair of chromosomes from the man, 23 pair of chromosomes from the woman. Now, or 23 chromosomes, excuse me, from the man, 23 chromosomes from the woman, making 46 chromosomes, a pair of chromosomes. So Noah symbolizes the navel chakra. Hence, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Within Qigong and Tai Chi is a known fact that you, when you practice Qigong and Tai Chi, that you absorb energy and store the energy in your navel chakra. And it fills up your belly. This light or this energy fills up your belly like you drunk water. So hence, they was giving you a clue that if you practice Qigong Tai Chi for 40 days and 40 nights, you can get and conquer your emotional state. In other words, of the fear factor, lust, greed, jealousy, and envy, all of these um, attributes actually stems from fear. Fear of something being taken from you. So Noah symbolizes the navel chakra. Adam, the root chakra. Noah, the navel chakra. The solar plexus is Abraham. Abraham came from the land of Ur. Ur means fire within the Chaldean. Ur, fire, hence solar plexus. Solar, fire. That's what solar means, fire. So Abraham symbolizes the solar plexus. David symbolizes the heart. The word David, Dawid, Dawu means beloved within Hebrew and Arabic. Moses symbolizes the throat chakra. Remember, he said, let my people go. But prior to that, he claimed that he couldn't speak eloquently. He said, my brother Aaron. The next time you see him speaking in front of Noah, I mean, in front of the Pharaoh, casting down the snakes and telling Pharaoh to let my people go. So somehow he learned how to break forth um his expression, his communication skills became greater. But that was symbolic to us breaking free from um, the boundaries of our expression at the throat chakra and become and becoming more talkative spiritually. And Moses symbolized that. Jesus symbolizes the third eye, the light of the world. Matter of fact, in in uh, Matthew's the sixth chapter twenty second verse, it states that when the eye be single, the whole body will be filled with light. So that symbolizes the third eye area, because the eye is one eye. Uh, within Hebrew and Arabic, the letter ayn, a i y n or a y n, symbol is one eye. Jesus symbolizes the third eye in that regard. 
and also the Ain sound, which happens to end uh, when you read Al Fatiha, which we'll get into a moment. When you uh, read Al Fatiha, which is the first prayer or surah chapter <clears throat> in the Holy Quran. All right, has seven stanzas, and each stanza has or ends with an ayn sound. All right, that goes back to that eye again. And then the last is Muhammad, the last seal of the prophets, which symbolizes the crown chakra, the last seal of the prophets. So this is what this is all talking about. This is why Jesus stated within the book of John that it would become one after me who would bring truth and would be the comforter. And this is why Muslims say, Orthodox Muslims say that it was Muhammad. Because to come after Jesus, remember Jesus was after the order of Melchizedek. So Muhammad symbolizes, in a sense, El Qadir or uh, Melchizedek, in a sense, in a higher sense. And the colors of Al Qadir was green as well as also violet, which um, the the crown chakra is violet. The same colors as the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, in chemistry: red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So this is what this is really referring to. All right, we're going to take a question. If we can here. Um, hopefully you all begin to start asking some questions. I mean, we've been through a lot of information here. So, um, please um, begin to start asking some questions because um, there's a lot of information that I just dropped. All right, someone asked in the someone asked in the chat room. Um, well, yeah, Joseph is the biblical um, Imhotep. Um, the story of Joseph is nothing more than Imhotep. Um, of course, we know that. You know, that is um, the tie. You know, um, Joseph becomes the prime advisor, prime minister, just like Imhotep becomes the prime minister, but he became the prime minister under Zozer. All right? Um, Joseph um, in the Bible becomes the prime minister under the Pharaoh. So um, Dozer or Zozer was the Pharaoh during the Third Dynasty. So this is what, I mean, the biblical character, that's where that comes from. Now, um, James, Jesus' brother, Someone asked about it, really talked about um, James. Um, when you're talking about the word, all right, James is the same word as Yaku within Hebrew. All right, James is the um, Latin transliteration of the word um, Jacob or Yaku. All right, and um, that is nothing more than a rendition of the Old Testament character of Yaku which is part of the tribe who formed the 12 tribes of Israel. Yaakov becomes Israel, or Isis, Ra, and El, which is um, Oset, Ra, and El. Oset was the daughter of Ra. El is actually Heru. All right, so um, actually um, Ra is also also. So actually we have the Holy Trinity. So Israel becomes the Holy Trinity in the New Testament. You know, the Father the Holy Ghost, and the Son. The Holy Ghost is the mother principle. You know, Mayat, or Oset. You know, Mut. You know, so this is what that is talking about, um, that character, um, really. That's what that's what they're really talking about. Now, Moses is um, the Moses, the third. All right? Um, it's a known fact that the Moses cast out the last remnants of the Hyksos dynasty. The Hyksos is allegedly becomes the Habarus, which becomes the Hebrews. But 
This is what is said historically. However, um, the Heb Heru is actually what the priests of Heru. And Akhenaten left out of the um 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 out of the dynasty. Um, the priest of Heru was also the priest of Atan, who becomes Adonai within um, the Bible in Hebrew. So every time you see the word Lord or Master, it is actually Adonai. Adonai is taken, which is A D O N, or Adon, and then they put the A I on the end of Adonai. Is taken from Aten, A T O N. The D and the T are interchangeable also in the Metunata language. So Aten becomes the deity. All right, so um, Aten, we know, symbol is that of a round disc, a sun disc. And remember, that is part of the same symbology that we talk about with the Uraeus, which is the Washashet, um, um, or the Caduceus in this Greek um, terminology or wording. So we see that that sun disk is Aten, and it has the wings at the side, in which that symbolizes the expansion of the mind. The sun disk itself symbolizes the pineal gland, and normally um, at the center of the pineal gland is a black dot, which symbolizes the um, um the, what is called the lotus lorelius, which is known as the black dot, which is one of the 12 paracranial nerves. In which that when it's activated, um, it gives you the ability in order to loosen dream and to have out of body experiences. In other words, for the spirit or the soul to leave the physical body, either in um, astral travel or either in soul travel. So, this is what this is talking about. This is why you'll see um, the body or the soul, the ba. With the face, it looks like a bird, but it has a face of the individual who's laying um, on the table, on the, um, who's mummified, you know, who body look like a sarcophagus, actually. Um, you'll see the rendition of that metuneta or that hieroglyphic. And this is what is being shown, that the soul leaves the physical body. Okay, upon death, but it also can leave upon um, trauma, drama, various experiences. Um, the difference between soul travel, astral travel, astral travel comes from the activation of the solar plexus. Soul travel comes from the activation of the crown chakra, the pineal gland. Astral travel, a person is only relegated to the astral plane. In other words, you can't go to the various planes. You can't go into the ethereal plane, the physical plane, the mental plane, the, um, the causal plane, the spiritual plane, or the soul plane. However, a person who does soul travel can go into all of those planes. So a person who soul travel can actually personify and solidify their bodies, their, um, their soul body enough to look like their physical incarnation on earth. This is where the stories of the souls, um, um, of, um, angels, and all of these things come from. All right? So this is what this is really talking about. All right? Uh, let me see what else here. We have another question. Can you expand on Judaism being a D religion and not a BC religion? Well, yeah. Um, Judaism didn't come into existence as far as the Jews, um, who were known as the um, um, the Ashkenazims. Even though the word Ashkenazim is one of the sons of Japheth, who was one of the three sons of Noah, is mentioned in the Old Testament. As far as the conversion of these Ashkenazims, these Russian um, Mongolian um, Jews, um, strands of Jews, um, didn't come until after the burning of Jerusalem in 70 AD. All right. Prior to that, um, that's 70 AD, 70 AD. So prior to that, um, we we're talking about the ancient mystery school. And um, during that um, time, is when they began to start actually put together what is now known as the Old Testament, in which that they claimed that it came from 72 
um, rabbis. All right, if you check the historical um, connection between um, behind who formed the Old Testament, they always say 72 rabbis. Well, that's Jewish mythology or mysticism because they talk about the 72 angels. Um, or the 72, in which that makes up the name Yahivahi. All right, you have Yah, you have Yahi, you have Yahivah, and Yahivahi, in which that when you break it down numerally, um, like the Y equals 5, I mean, excuse me, the Y equals Yad, which is 10, which symbolizes fire. Um, he um, breaks down to five, which symbolizes air. Va, a wa, breaks down to six, which symbolizes um, water. And he breaks down to five, which symbolizes earth, which comes to 26. However, when you do yad, yahi, then yahi, wa, and then yahi, vahi, it comes to 72. So the name of God breaks down to 72 in geometria or numerology. All right? So this is what they're talking about. And you can get this from Godwin's Kabbalistic Encyclopedia and also from the Dictionary of Angels. All right? So... This is what they're talking about. So, what we come to find out, too, is that Arias, who is known as Arias or Arias or Arias, um, Pisos or Pisos, who was part of the Roman aristocratic family, in which that he formed the New Testament, him and his sons and his friends formed the New Testament. And it was related to Herod, uh, which is mentioned in the um, New Testament, as well as also to Cleopatra from the um, Cleopatra line from out of the Ptolemy family out of Egypt who ruled Egypt during the um, last days um, before his fell, before his fall, great fall. Um, and they fell because of homosexuality, I might add, just like this civilization is getting ready to fall based on those same demoralized um, actions and ways and behaviors. So, um, Arias and his people are the ones who put together the 26 books in the New Testament. Okay, so this is where that comes from. And um, Arias' other name was Josephus, so he becomes Josephus, the first century historian, who supposedly spoke about Jesus, but actually if you read his writings, he spoke about 14 different Jesuses. And that with 14 Jesus was nothing more than talking about the 14... Um, pieces of or saw. See, this is the symbology and everything in which that they do. This is why if you don't know the symbolism, you can't do the speaking. You must know the symbolism. This is why you have to study Freemasonry, Rosicrucian information. You have to in order to overstand, understand, understand what they're talking about so you can decode it. For you can be a true metaphysician. And then, of course, you can do what any true metaphysician would, and that's to tell the people. Yes, Flavius Josephus is a Rias Pisos, a Pisos. Exactly. So this is what they're talking about. All right? Oh, yeah, Baptiste and um, um, baptism and Baphomet. Yeah. Um, what they're talking about, once again, remember, we're talking about happy. Happy was the river Nile deity. And I was speaking earlier that Muhammad or Muhammad, Ma'at, Muhammad, which becomes Muhammad, happy with the now deity river god, and of course he symbolizes the waters of life. And so, of course, 
In order to be baptized, you must be baptized in water, first by John the Baptist, who known who is known to be a form of Anpu or Anubis um, within um, the particular um, um, text. If you go and read Gerald Massey lectures or read any book by Gerald Massey, his natural beginnings, his, book of, um, his natural genesis, his book of beginnings, his ancient Egypt, the light of the world, um, and all of those books, that's what he breaks down to. Okay, um, it says, why is sacrificing of animals and building of altars looked down upon in Christianity? I don't know why, because they used to do it themselves. As a matter of fact, I mean, this is what is um, within the Old Testament, animal sacrificing. Matter of fact, even Abraham put his son up, Isaac, to be sacrificed. Human sacrifice um, was there. You know what I'm saying? This is where they get that um, the children um, was being sacrificed to the god Moloch. And Moloch becomes, of course, that 50-foot-tall owl um, rendition at the Bohemian Grove. In which that Alec Jones and them speak about. All right, but I mean, this is what is said. I think that is um, a smoke screen, personally. All right, that's a smoke screen. Really, what is going on is that that owl, fifty foot tall owl, is actually um, is actually um, um, MR within the Metroneta, which is the word more. When you break it down, that's what it is. Okay? So, um, that's why on the um, front of the dollar building, upper right-hand corner near the one, you will see an owl peeping from out of the corner. Because they know that they stole our government. Or better yet, I should say, they built their government, which is the fictitious de facto government, on our republic government, the real government. And then they enslaved us physically and mentally, even more so mentally, you know, stole our land, our birthright, our nationality, and actually we now have amnesia. Luckily, the spell is being broken because the spell will only last 300 to 1,000 years. So that means the first fruit would break the spell in 300 years, which we are breaking it now. This is why these radio shows are going on. It's because Willie Lynch, supposedly that speech was written in 1712, plus 300 years would be 2012. So we're right amongst the time, or right at the brink of time, with this spell to be broken, what's called the spell of Kingo, the spell of Leviathan, um, that Dr. York and them spoke about. Um, this spell is being broken. Oh, Willie Lynch being chip is being deactivated. <clears throat> okay. Um, someone asks, um, is there a connection between Ka and the Ba, the Makaba, the Kabala, and the Dekaba? Yes. Um, matter of fact, it's all one and the same. Um, the Kaaba, the Ka is your spirit, the Ba is your soul. The word Makaba is when you take your auric field and expand your Ka and your Ba, your soul, your spirit and your soul, your spiritual soul. The Kabbalah is a book which is based on how to expand your spirit, your spiritual soul into the nothingness. All right? La means nothingness in Hebrew. So this is what they're talking about. The nothingness is actually the potential of something, of something, which is talking about potential energy, and you're making it kinetic. You're making it kinetic. All right? Kinetic energy is... Um, potential energy made um, made into movement, all right? And the Kaaba is the replica of what happens internally to you on your spiritual journey. At the Kaaba, you go around the Kaaba in Mecca, all right? The word Mecca, Becca, is talking about the state of mind, the brain. And you go around this Mecca, in Mecca, you go around this Kaaba seven times. And on the seventh turn, you kiss the black stone. The black stone symbolizes melanin, being excreted from the pineal gland, and which is known as the black dot. All right? And this 
um, particular chemical that is being excreted, melanin, melatonin, serotonin, or precursors to the melanin. Melatonin is produced on the hours of um, 11 a.m. at night to 7, to, excuse me, 11 p.m. at night to 11 a.m. in the morning, and serotonin is produced from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. That is what actually is taking place. So when we're talking about um, the Kaaba, they're talking about that going those rotations around it. Each set, um, um, seven of them symbolize the activation of each of the chakras. Chakras are known as wheels of thought, color, light, and sound. So that's what you're activating in that, um, and that's what that represents, or that symbolism of doing so. All right, and then on the seventh rotation, you open and activate the pineal gland, the black dot. The awakening of the soul. That's what that is all symbolic to. And then, of course, you know, part of the ritual is to throw um, 27 stones at the three pillars and say, I shaitan, I shaitan, I at Udo Bilahi Mene Shaitan Rajim, at Udo Bilahi Mene Shaitan Rajim. In other words, um, I seek refuge in Allah from saying the curse. All right, so this is what this is all referring to. And what we were saying earlier about. Um, Pata, Pata Ra, being um, the Oscar at the Emmy Awards is the same picture. If you go and look at um, Pata, Pata Ra, Pata Ray, you will see that's the exact same image of Oscar, the golden image of Oscar, which is Osa, is Pata. Pata and Osa is one and the same deity, and Pata is known as um, the father of the um, of the Neturus. Matter of fact, the word father is where we get the English transliteration of Ptah from, as well as the word Peter. Hence, also, um, Peter becomes another name for the phallus, because the word Peter um, means rock. And then we say the word cock is hard as a rock. This is what this is all symbolic to, just a symbolism. And then you have the big head, and the little head. The big head is the pineal gland in which that also get engulfed in blood, in which that becomes hard as a rock also. And it is shaped like the head of the cock. All right, so this is what this is all talking about. This is the symbolism. All right, we have to understand symbolism. I can't say this enough. All right, we finally got some questions. Call it 302. You're on the line. He's on peace, brother. It's it's brother Messiah. All right, brother. How you doing? I'm all right. And yourself? Doing well. All right. Yeah, I, I don't want to step too much off of the topic. I just want to get back into um, what you were speaking about earlier as far as um, the Egyptian Book of the Dead and um, its connection to modern religion. I want to know if um, the Wallace Budge translation, um, how accurate is it, if it's accurate? It's not as accurate as it can be. Um, the better um, book will probably be the Book of the Dead coming from Dr. Muwata Ashby and also um, the Book of the Dead coming from um, the more accurate text will probably be coming from um, the one that I trust is Dr. Muwata Ashby as well as also um um, Ra Amen, uh, um, Ra Nefa Amen. You know, um, he wrote a book of um, the Book of the Dead, also. All right, or the Pehem Hiru. So, um, I, I would, those are the two in which that I would recommend. The reason why is because they have the symbolism down pat. If you don't know the symbolism, then you can't possibly translate. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, God. Appreciate that. All right, peace. Peace. All right, the next number is 202. Beginning 202, you're on the line. 202? Yes, peace. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Peace. Oh, peace. 
I just have a question about um, Jesus. I spoke to a person who got a degree in um, whatever it is called when you study the Bible on Christianity, and she said that Jesus had a son named Barnabas. Had you ever heard that before? Yes. Um, that is um, the story in which that is called, is called Barnabas, and it's called Bar, but then Aramaic in Old Hebrew means son of. All right? So... Um, is actually his name is Bar Jesus. Barnabas actually was his brother. Um, Jesus' brother was Barnabas, but uh, Bar Jesus, Simon Bar Jesus, was the son of Jesus. All right. Say that again. Right. I didn't understand Simon, the last part. Simon Bar Jesus. Simon Bar Jesus. Simon oh, okay. was the son of Jesus, right? Oh, okay. His name is Simon Bar Jesus. When they speak about um, Simon, he's mentioned also in the Bible. Um, some say that it was Simon who actually helped Jesus carry the cross. Um, some say that it was um, also Simon who was known as the Simon the Magi. All right, so um, that that is what the similar that's that is the similar. I mean, it's all allegory, you know. So it's not is no need of getting hooked on, you know, who's who in that sense. It's better yet to explain the symbolism and how it applies to the physical body and to your life existence. Just knowing a story in which that supposedly occurred 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 years ago would do nothing for you here and now unless you was able to decode the mysticism behind it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for that insight. All right. Peace. All right. All right. Call a 904. Call a 904. You're on the line. Yes. Um, the Bible. Um, is it safe to say really um, get rid of religion, all religions, because it's man-made? Well, all religions are man-made, but even so, man is trying to explain his very existence. So you can't get rid of religion in a sense. Um, it would be just best to break down the symbolism in the religions. And once again, like I told his last sister, the caller, how it applies to your very existence, how it applies to your life, how it applies to your physical body, your hormones, your endocrine glands, because these are the things on which that um, has the real significance. Whenever you look at these various stories, these stories break, break down really about you, not about the character in which that people get so caught up into, but about morality and about... Um, spiritual aspects of one's own nature and the downfalls and hum human traits of one's nature. Just like when you read about Adam and Eve you know, being cast out the Garden of Eden, how they got cast out was because Adam placed blame on Eve. So that becomes actually one of the first problems with man's nature is that he don't take responsibility, and that's how he lost his connection with God is because we fear taking responsibility for our own deeds, ways, and actions. We rather take a mythical character and place our deeds, ways, and actions upon it and say, well, you handle it for me, instead of handling it for so ourselves. Okay, so reading the Bible don't uh, kind of like... No, the, the uh, book that you need you. in order to help you, the book in which that you need in order to help uh, you, when you, when you read the Bible, the book that you need in order to help you when you read is the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. Get the book. It's called Metaphysical Bible Dictionary by Charles Fillmore. So when you read the Bible, you'll have a greater understanding of what those names really mean instead of just reading about Hezekiah. Well, what does Hezekiah mean in Hebrew? Get you a strong concordance Bible. And which that give you the English and the transliteration of it from Hebrew. That way you can and from Greek. That way you can know what those names really mean. And then what the spiritual components behind those names actually are trying to be conveyed to you. Okay. That's the problem. See you got Christians reading the Bible when the names are in Hebrew. And they don't know the names. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what the names mean. So how can you have the true understanding of what the book is trying to tell you and convey to you? You can't. It's so it don't hurt your consciousness waking up? No. My, my mind's woke, and I read the Bible for many years. 
It never stopped me from learning anything, um, any more information. I read the Quran. I read the Bible four times. I read the Quran on four times, four or five times. I read many books, hundreds and thousands of books. It never stopped me from knowing the truth and getting to the truth and knowing how to break this information down if you heard the whole show so far. You would not hear no breakdown like this information anywhere on the radio public um, um, side of things. This information, I'm telling you, is kept behind doors. The Rosicrucians have this information. The Freemasons, at the highest degree, have this information. Okay, so the truth is here between the lines. You just oh, gotta, yeah, been um, hidden. Know and that's why we get people in Mm-hmm. Because it contradicts itself a lot. The Bible really does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, don't let it contradict you. <laughs> it's a book. Just like any other book, there's errors. Matter of fact, um, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it was about 50,000 errors that were still mentioned in the Bible. Okay. Okay, because I was getting ready to get rid of all my Bibles. <laughs> No, don't get rid of nothing. Yeah, I it. even got a Mormon Bible. I mean, I just yeah. didn't just the ones trying to learn. Right, right. I mean, the whole point is study. I mean, you don't get, I mean, when you go to college and you do your reading, you know, um, for the classes, you don't get rid of your, um, you know, your um, books um, before the exam. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, and that's all this is. All life is nothing but experience. Mm-hmm. The books is nothing more than simple summaries of what man is trying to convey about his own spirituality and his God, which is within each and every one of us. Hence the reason why is our Lord a personal Savior. Because there's only one God per oh, person. Uh, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was saying there's only one oh, God per person. So when it says okay. that my God is a jealous God, it's talking about because... We have a tendency of not focusing on the God within, and we take and make things outside of us our deities, our idols, our stars. Mm -hmm. This is why Hollywood referred to the individuals who are actors and um, and models and so forth as idols and stars, who are singers as idols and stars. And we take them and we see them as the criteria. And we boost them up, something always outside of ourselves, instead of focusing on the God within. And we do that with um, with people. So, yeah, my God, which is my God within, is a jealous God because um, I'm not focusing on real true divinity resides at. I can't reside, I can't re, um, reside on the um, divinity of another man or woman. I have to do that for myself. Mm-hmm. All right, because God is within the kingdom of God is within the Holy Spirit is within Jesus Christ is within all right, so you know we 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 done took and anthropomorphized these characters in order to make them something outside of ourselves, and they even gave us an image of this beast, a white image at that, in order to make us focus on and give all our power and prana and chi and key energy to. In which that is causing our demise. Okay. And that's the spell of Leviathan, or the spell of Kingo, that Willie Lynch um, um, spell or syndrome. And what so is known how as, important is learning meditation with this prayer? Very important, because it helps breaks the, um, it helps you pierce through the veil of the illusion. Remember, we said that Jesus symbolizes shoe which is Yahshua, his Aramaic old Hebrew name, and which that is salvation. Jesus said, the only way you can get to the Father is but by me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Talking about the breath of life. The only way you can get to the Father, which is the soul inside of the pineal gland, is by breathing. Yahshua, Jesus, the breath of life. In which that causes you to crucify the lower nature, to raise to your higher nature or your higher self and activate the soul principle within yourself to awaken your God so that your God now can do that. That's just like, think about it. When you see Aladdin with the um, genie in a bottle mm-hmm. or the lamp, 
when he rubs on the lamp, the genie awakens and comes out in order to do his bidding and grant him the wishes. Well, this is what your God is waiting for you to do. Once you rub that lamp, right. that pineal okay. gland, once you rub that lamp, that pineal gland, and your soul awaken, then your, that's your God. That's your genie, your genius, your brilliance, your intelligence. Now your magic wand, it can do what it needs to do for you. And the things that you want in life, in this plane of existence, in this physical incarnation, you can have it. Instead of us being like slaves, broke-ass niggas, crying and begging and always complaining. We don't have to do that. If we awaken to the God within each and every one of ourselves, we can become the gods and goddesses, the Neturus, the Nagas of this planet once again. And then none of the stuff around us would matter? Exactly. You got it. None of this shit would matter no more. Why? Because we'd be running this shit like we was a few hundred thousand years ago. Before our creation went on a rampage. Because actually, so it's, it's, it's so the Albion, so he was actually really. our slave. Oh. That's why we created him. Even if you get Zachariah Ascension, he tells you that we created Lulu, which is the man, to be our slave. Uh-huh. This is where that concept comes from. So read the book Zachariah Ascension, um, The Twelfth Planet, Genesis Revisited. Their way to heaven. Yeah, I got all his books. Wars, right, Wars of Gods and Men. There you go. So you got the books. Yeah. You got it. So you want it. You got it. Eric Van Daniken, he was writing some pretty good books one time, too. You got it. Chariot of the Gods, one and two, exactly. Yeah. The Genesis Revived, well, he, something like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, him and Zachariah Ascension came out around the same time, around in the 1970s, early 1970s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they were the ones who which explored, you know, exploded this um, cosmology of extraterrestrials coming into the planet Earth. But they failed to tell the people that we were the extraterrestrials. So we are the aliens. Oh yes, we are the we are the aliens. We are the extraterrestrials. So there's no lizards or nothing anything. like that, right? Hmm. So there's no lizards or nothing like that. Um, well, we are a byproduct of two Blair different species. Alpha always talking about lizards and. Alien. Well, well, we like, okay, we we are a byproduct of twenty two different species of aliens. This is shown within our twenty two amino acids. Okay. So we are a break. We actually are a component of twenty two different um, alien beings. Okay. So when we talk about reptilians, um, we talk about the fact that we do have webs in between our fingers and our toes which symbolizes an aquatic being. Our physical body is composed of 75% water. Mm-hmm. So we are essentially an aquatic being. Okay? So when we're talking about a amphibian being or a reptilian being, we water beings, if that's what they want to refer to it as. I will, not, I, I will not give it the name reptilian or whatever the case is, but we are water beings. Now, David Icke is talking about entities that are fourth-dimensional beings who have attached themselves to the first and second chakra of an individual, and they become perfectly possessed, in which that sometimes when you look at a person in a certain way, that entity phases in into the physical body, and you can see that entity, in which that oftentimes looks reptilian-like. This is what David Icke is referring to. Now, um, those who are elite in the world, who mm-hmm. sits at the helm of power and money and finances, right. these beings have given them power to do so. And they have given them power through blessed sacrifices to do so. And through being able to tell lies to the masses and to the people, to use religion as one of their shields of their perversions. See, that's why I think uh, Walter Williams, uh, Professor Walter Williams was saying get rid of religion because they misuse well, it. Well, right. Well, in a sense, you know, he's absolutely correct. But, of course, um, even with getting rid of religion, you would still have his books, Historical Origin of Christianity and Historical Origin of Islam. 
So mm-hmm. if you say you, you get rid of religion, then we have also say you have to get rid of his books. You see? Mm-hmm. Because we wouldn't need his books any longer either. Because there would be no need for because we wouldn't have no religion. <laughs> mm, right, right. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go on to the next person. Peace, guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Peace. Peace. All right. Caller 321. Caller 321, you on the line. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Peace, peace. Peace, peace, brother. All right. Definitely a monumental show tonight. Definitely. Oh, yeah. We ain't playing. Yeah, no, nah, we ain't. <laughs> no, we ain't anymore. Um, I have a question. Um, I want you to uh, go go into a little bit on the uh, on Solomon. And, right. Uh, yeah. Well, Solomon is another form of Amin Ra. Sol S O L is Ra, which is sun, and O M O N is Amen. So Amin Ra means the hidden sun or the hidden light. The light within each and every one of us. We cannot physically see, but we know that it controls and runs the physical body because you move, you talk, you walk, you shit, you piss. You you do all the things in which that animates the physical body. There's something, a light that is there that animates the physical body. And obviously it's there when you're alive and it's not there when you're dead. And that's Amin Ra, in which that has been defined as the soul. S-O-L becomes S-O-U-L, the soul. So the soul is the hidden component of Ra. Hence, it is said that Ra has seven sons or seven children, the seven souls of Ra, as they refer to as. But then um, Hebrew, they know it as the seven Elohims or the seven archangels. All right? Michael, which is Mikael, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, um, Samuel, Gimiel. So they become an... Um, and um, Gimiel, so they become those seven archangels, those seven Elohims, those seven souls of Ra. Okay, so this is what they are. This is what that Solomon thing actually breaks down to. Each of the chakra components within us, which is um, the wheels of light, thought, color, and sound, is a form of Ra in its various aspects. In other words, Ra symbolizes a form of Kunsu, consciousness in which that is slowed down from the light aspects to the material or matter aspect. Okay? Definitely. All right, God. Yeah. All right, God. Peace. Peace. Yeah. All right, call a 551. 551, you're on the line. Five five one, come on, you're on the line. You're on the line. Five five one. And then fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred. And then fifteen hundred. You're on the line. All right, we're gonna come back. Um nine one six, you're on the line. <clears throat> hey, peace, peace, Ali. Peace, God. Oh yeah, peace, God. Uh man, good talking to you, man, right now. Uh Everything that you've been talking about covered my question from what I, you know, wrote down to ask. Although I still want to ask and see, you know, is your perspective of it? Right. And, you know, basically you have broke down, you know, the Hebrew alphabet and you know how to align the line, um, the letters with the aspects of um, the Egyptian, I thought, and you know that and so forth. Although, right. uh, you know, it aligns with the zodiac also, right? Okay, right. and towards the yeah. and towards. Okay, towards the body. Okay, mm-hmm. and the question is, is like when it when it does that through the ether, you know how you get signals on your body, how you know you get like touches, like you know I'm speaking of myself, you know you get touches and you know you wake up to these things at that moment. The question is, at that moment, do you should you apply those aspects of those entities that is representing? You know, in the parts of the body, like, you know, your arms, you know, the Gemini, what represents Gemini <clears throat> in uh, Hebrew alphabet as well as Egyptian, you know, so on down the line. Right. You're right in his act. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, like we were saying, the, um, we're uh, made up of 22 amino acids, which is symbolic to the 22 Hebrew letters. And right. if you go to Meru, M-E-R-U dot org, www dot M-E-R-U dot org, if you go there, you can see that there are hand glyphs, actual hand glyphs for each of the Hebrew oh. letters which that you can actually do in order to okay. bring about a particular uh, response, especially when you practice Qigong and Tai Chi. If you use those hand glyphs, you can actually develop um, your own system of healing, all right, oh, um, through right. the Qigong, as well mm-hmm. as also um, when you're talking about those particular energies touching because that's mm-hmm. actually what you're talking about, is light touching, the way that the light comes down and touches your melanin. You know, yeah. your melanocytes acts as black holes, and that means that the melanocytes absorb light, and actually you can use that light once it is stored within three particular areas, within your navel chakra, within your heart chakra, and within your third eye chakra. Once you store okay. that energy in one of these particular locations, you can use that later, that energy um, later on to be reused, to be transmitted on yourself or conducted on someone else. Okay, yeah, because I'm basically focused on myself right now. You know, I'm not right. trying to, you know, as, you know, I had, you know, worked with an older guy and, you know, I projected some energy, you know, to uplift him and, and things worked out pretty good. Although, you know, sometimes, you know, these touches, they're not, so, you know, friendly, and that's just the, you know, sense I get, you know what I mean? And it's right. like I, I, I want to wipe them off, or do I just, you know, well, uh, I'm you have do to, what is called you know, pranic what? healing. Pranic, y'all know, uh, pranic healing. You have to pranic. do what is called the 6363 breath or the 7171 breath, in which that, as you are breathing, you can do what is known as scanning and also scraping or sweeping, as it is known as within pranic healing, and actually sweep down the front and the sides of your body and have Uh someone to sweep down your back and actually Uh take the bioplasmic energy, Uh which is obviously negative, as you said, that that's what you're feeling is negative energy, and what you do with it is cast it off into the grass or into um, a pot of water, a bowl of water, I should say, or either a pot of dirt, or salt, or uh, a plant. Okay, so I have to dispose so of you, it somewhere right, else. So you have to weigh that uh, bioplasmic uh, energy, negative energy, away from you, and then mm-hmm. flick your hands three times hard into the water, into that plant, or whatever the case is, whatever you're using as a transference of that bioplasmic energy, that negative energy, and cast that energy off and throw that energy out. Now, with the plant, you don't have to do anything. You can put it back where it is. It's just like the biosymbiotic um, influence between plant life or tree and, and man. Um, we give off carbon dioxide. It takes carbon dioxide in. It gives off oxygen. We take oxygen in. So they love and grow from the bioplasmic energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, okay. that, and that's a good point. You brought that up about the trees and the plants because that's, one of the things that, you know, I was awakened to is the light through the tree. And, right. and it, it created, you know, uh, you know, our form. And, 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 right. and, you know, not saying that all the touches are, are, are good, not all the touches are bad, but it's just I just need a distinction, a definite distinction of, you know, which ones. Because I have a cleansing process of it, but that's a good one you just laid out for me. Uh, although it's just, you know, just the distinction of, uh, you know, the two. You you see, you see what I'm saying? Because sometimes it'll come hard and, like, jerks, you know, right. sometimes. And it's like, you know, wake up from it, and it's like almost waking up out of sleep and knowing that's what it is. But it, it's like, uh, you know, it's just like a, a light, a, a light cold lockdown, <laughs> you know, or what I, you know, you know, heard of. And you know, research known before, so it's like just making sure I resonate. It, it, I'm resonating right. Right, I got you. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Good help, good help. I appreciate the talk, man. You drop a lot of knowledge, and, and uh, man, I'm always here to pick it up too. I appreciate it. Like we said, we're not playing. Okay, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, All right, All right, All right. Peace. All right. Um, you better come on with these questions. We only got a few minutes left. Call it 813. You're on the line. 813. Hey, peace, brother. Peace, peace. Hey, man, I love you. I love the listeners and even the ones that ain't even listening. They listen to us. <laughs> they need to be listening. You know? They, hey, you know, they can feel it because they, they, that, that third strand is about to kick in. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Um, I, Actually, I got more of a comment than actually a question. All you right. can tell individuals, question everything. Ask questions. Right. Even to Dr. Aline today, ask That's right. question him. Do your own research. That's when you make it your own. Um, And, and more in line to, um, to the asking question things, when people talk, they tell you the truth. All we have to do is just listen. Because they tell you, you know how they say, uh, as far as like Jewish people, they're telling you who they are. If I call you blackish or niggerish or Moorish or, or whatever, you're going you go, you go to sit back and say, okay, now that's something like. They're telling, right. they they telling you they're not it. You know what I'm saying? That's true. As a matter of fact, the word Jew is taken from the word Jehuti. Jehuti. And Right, which it is spelled totally right, but it's actually pronounced Jehuti. So it's J-E-W-H-U-T-I, Jehuti. And sometimes they put the D in front of it. So really what we're talking about is that they're claiming that they've studied the principles of the um, of Tahuti, which are the seven principles that we made mention of earlier. However, mm-hmm. uh, when we really look at what they really teach is a perversion, you know, of those teachers, especially if they're Zionists. You know, and then you can take it. You can take it further. You look, look at British because the actual Brits were black. That, that's British, right. They were Brits. And, and you if can they don't know that, they need to get the books um, "Ancient Modern Britons" by um, David Magritte, Volume One and Two. And Scottish, the true Scots were black. They even made it in the, the comedy movie with um, uh, what's the name? Martin movie? Lawrence, Queen Skoda. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's like they're telling you. It's like you know, I see it. This right here is a beautiful thing. I'm not even fearing nothing. Everything right now that's transpiring is supposed to happen. I'm not going to go off the topic because I want I, was, I wanted to apologize. The last time, I, uh, last week, I said don't go down to the um, to the march as far as the Occupy. If that's in your if in, in your heart, do that because some people need to do that. Me, I'm not doing that shit. But some people, if that that's in your calling, go down there and go because that might be what you need to be doing. Everybody has their own calling out here. Like some that's people that quote quote is in the asshole. They might they that might be the best thing that happened in your life. That asshole on your job that you know that got you fired or made you want to quit, and then you went on to do other things. They helped you to realize what you're supposed to have been doing. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know we got to start re- reevaluating all this shit. You know, you know just big that. Oh, and this is the last little thing right here. When I used to, you know, do my shit on the street or whatever, I used to go home. My mother was just like, you know what I'm saying, I I want to know the truth. Don't be telling me no stories. But then I, and I sat back and think, you know, I was always analytical. You know, I'm a bit of Virgo-ass nigga, type nigga and shit. Oh, yeah. When when she said, stop telling so I'm like, Mom, but you sent me to school to learn history, his story. I'm like, you know, I'm at the point that I don't want to know his story. I don't even want to know, I don't even want to know my story. I want the truth. Because I don't want none, none of this shit watered down. I don't want none of this shit played. Just give me the truth. It's time for us to have the truth now. And I think that's what we're ready for right now. And that's what's going to well, be. The change is already right here anyway. Because you're bringing the truth like crazy. And that's a beautiful thing. You got people, you waking, man, you, you must know, you don't know how many people you waking. A lot of people not even asking questions, but still ask the question. There's no stupid question. There's no I stupid agree. question. No. Oh, I agree. One little last little thing right here. Um, you, you broke down the... Um, Astrology wise, as far as the ages, like twenty, twenty, one hundred and sixty, and then you multiply that by twelve, and that's right. uh, twenty-five, sixty. But the way you can do that, because we always doing it anyway. This sacred geometry. You shoot the dice. The dice is four corners on a dice. That's that's ninety degrees. You times that by four. That's three sixty. And then you got six sides to the dice. You times that that. You know, you, when you when you times the, the, the uh, four times the ninety, that's three sixty. But then you times the six. Uh, uh, by the 360, that's uh, 2160. But then you got four, 
I mean, you got uh, 12 the constellations. You got 12 constellations. You times that by 12, and you got 25,920. So they can do it themselves instead of just, you know, just, just hearing it from somebody else. We do it every day. You know what I'm saying? We do it every day. Uh, shit, I'm picking my queen up again. <laughs> hey, baby. That, that that was pretty much it right there, brother. You know what I'm saying? Just just we appreciate you out there. Good. Thank, thank hey, you. Hey, uh, hey, matter of oh. fact, I gotta hit you tomorrow, man. <laughs> okay. I'll hit you tomorrow, champ. All right, love, love man. Peace, love. I love everybody, man. Love, That's man. what we need. We need more love, man. Don't no don't make this more difficult than we need to. Just right. keep doing what everybody's doing. And, and, and if you, that means being an asshole, some people might need to be an asshole to wake you up. <laughs> right. You know, I love you, man. All right, be going to 609, call it 609. Peace. Call it, yes, peace. Peace, you hear me? Yes, we can, bro. All right, um, I didn't listen to everything, um, um, brother, on every, you know, the whole thing, I came in late, but, um, Right, right, it's all right. I have um I have a, um, a you comment. Can check, just check it out and listen. Yeah, go ahead yeah, and comment, know, I, tomorrow, yeah, yeah, I got a comment and then I got a question. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm make it make it quick. Um, my comment mainly is more like a suggestion. Um, dealing with the spirituality and stuff for those who um are still seeking you know, on a path and looking for the linkage between like ancient commit and this um modern day religions or the ones that are more dominant in our hemisphere, which is, you know, Judeo Christian Judaism, Christianity and Islam, you know, look towards the Gnostics and it, it, that's like the missing link between um the commit ancient um, mystery schools and those three religions. You know, this for anyone else. Just research the Gnostics because a lot of times when they talked about the Christianity and they talked about the romanticism of the uh, persecution and all these Christians dying and, you know, for their religion, a lot of times it was forgery. It was pretty much the Gnostics who were being persecuted and who were dying right. under the sword of the Christian the Christian Empire. You know, so people have to look at that and, uh, and you know, and begin to dig in that. But my question is, <clears throat> is um, regarding a transitional period, when you're talking about spirituality and you're talking about coming out of maybe um, a religious type of atmosphere where someone who may be in, in the church most of their life, um, my question is, what what is the best method technique? Because sometimes a lot of people deal with, like, um, you know, Ray Higgins, you always talk about the psychoviscera. You know what I'm saying? It's already in your psyche. You know what I'm saying? So I'm asking you, Doctor. I mean, what are some techniques? Um, or what what methods could help someone in transitioning? You know, when they're trying to just leave that religion. You know, what I'm saying just that religious state, that dead religious state, and come into more of a spiritual um, uh, practice. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what can they do? Because they got a lot of, you know, you know, say this individual was, you know, in religion heavy. You know, and their religion heavy, and then they, you know, I don't know, one day got a, uh, got one of your tapes, got somebody's tape, and, you know, just been dealing with that whole thing. But, you know, you know, sometimes when right. they get around certain people, and, you know, they might start spitting out the old religion stuff. It might do right. something to them. So I was wondering, what right. is your... Um, yeah, well, your, in order to keep on the path of consciousness and knowledge and wisdom, um, what a person in understanding and comprehension, a person have to really... Um, dedicate themselves to finding life answers because you're talking about your soul. If a person has a soul, then they would never stop seeking. That's number one. Um, for those who do stop seeking and they get trapped or stagnated within a particular religion and a particular mind state or doctrine or dogma, um, what that often is is fear, you know, fear of going to hell because that's what they've been told. Well, number one, you have to break the confines of the fact that there is no hell. All right. Um, even the Catholic priest, um, if you get the YouTube clip, it's on um, YouTube um, about the Catholic priest um, um, admits that um, that um, hell was not the invention of the Catholic Church. Really? Yeah. So, you so um, once you break that, once you break um, the hell scenario, then you can go forward in order to find heaven. 
whether it's heaven in your mind, heaven on earth, or heaven after the death of the physical body, or life after life, as we call it. So whatever the case is, you can find heaven. You know what I'm saying? I mean, um, Bob Marley said it, you know what I'm saying, um, that um, you need to find heaven on earth. You know what I'm saying? So this is what we have to really look towards. Now, in the process of a person who's breaking the confines of that of the chain of religion, they will have to put together their own religious practice, mm -hmm. something that they do on a daily basis or something that they mm -hmm. do um, a day out the week instead of doing it on a Sunday, like what's been told to them, you know, to do, you know, um, in regard of going to church. They have to do something. They might have to find a group or a class to attend. I suggest Ron Neffer classes, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. of the All Star Set Society. Um, I um, suggest um, Sufi um, class. Mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. suggest um, classes um, up under Dr. York, you know what I'm saying, um, through the um, All Eyes of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's many um, schools, you know, the, um, the um, Moorish National and Divine Movement, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The Moorish Holy Temple of Science, the Moorish Science Temple of America. You know, I suggest um, some type of class or some type of group that you can become part of in which that what you're really missing is the fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what the individual would be missing is the fellowshipping. So, you know, tie yourself to a, um, a um, group of people that you can fellowship with that you feel good about. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't necessarily have to become a member, but, you know, go in order to learn. This is what life is. Life is a learning experience. You don't have to um, become um, a member of every um, group that you go to necessarily, you know. But, I mean, go and listen and learn. You know, this is what we have to do, learn, you know, and keep an open mind. You know, of course, be skeptical in the process, but, you know, keep that shit at the back of your head until you find the missing piece of the puzzle for yourself, you know. Don't disrupt class, fight, and, um... You know, and focus on what um, is trying to be conveyed to you, and uh, write down your questions and your, um, and um, you know, write down your information in your, in your book. And, and this is what needs to be done, you know, as far as a practical way of um, doing it, brother. So um, mm -hmm. that, that's my thoughts on it, brother Talib. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and um, one other question, just in the spiritual realm. Um, this is my last question. Um, the spiritual realm. Um, and those who are transitioning, my question is this. Do you still, like, I know we talk about spirituality, that, um, you know, we talk about heaven and hell, and there's no heaven, there's no hell, heaven is only existing within you. Um, but what about entities? Do you, do you, I don't know if you ever, I don't know yeah, if you Yeah, well, entities that, is, that. is negative thought forms. Entities are negative thought forms. Entities are also um, beings. I mean, the thing is, is that you've had billions and trillions of people upon this planet Earth over 4.5 billion years. So mm -hmm. you're talking about, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of people on the planet Earth. You know, civilizations have come and gone. And during the process, thoughts have emerged. And there is a field of thought in which that is called the ionosphere. Mm. All right, and all these thoughts that's what that's what is known as the external akashic records mm. or the universal library in which that every mm. thought in which that we have had now becomes part of the earth uh, magnetic field mm. or what is called um energy grid of consciousness mm. Mm. okay so um those thoughts. You know what I'm saying? If you resonate at a particular thought and it's negative, then that's what you will attract to yourself is that negative force. Mm -hmm. And so hence you become plagued by an entity or a demon or whatever, a jinn or whatever the case may be. That's mm -hmm. all that is. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? All right. Mm -hmm. I, and I even, appreciate the word jinn, even the word jinn is taken from the word your genes. And your genes mm -hmm. is you, a concentration of your ancestral line, bloodline. In which that you are tied back to seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side, in which that you are a concentration of them all. Hence the fourteen pieces of Osiris or Osa. So this is all this is talking about. You know what I'm saying? To bypass all of that, when you do your breathing meditations, you know, 
you have to affirm and decree positive things that you want in your life. And learn how to use your mind, your magic wand, in order to manifest what you really want into existence. And how you do that is by focusing and visualizing and using your imagination and seeing yourself doing and being what you really want in life. And you will have it. Okay? Mm-hmm. Appreciate, All right, that. Appreciate you, God. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Peace. All right. Peace. All right, call it 336. Call it 336. You're on the line. Yeah, what's going on, Brother Lane? It's, it's, right, it's peace, Brother Lane. Peace. Peace, hey, man, I've got a question right quick, man. Uh, I'm not trying to get too far off topic and everything, but, I, you know, I do know about the, you know, so above, uh, so below as within as without. Uh, mm-hmm. I just got a question, man. Uh, I, I work outside a lot. And uh, one time, man, I was I was outside, <clears throat> and I know how the sun, you know, dictates us and everything, receiving information. But, man, I, I ain't touched no glitter or nothing. My whole arms on my hands started, like, uh, twinkling. Like, I didn't touch nothing. I mean, I was sweating, but it started twinkling, and I, you know, I had to scrape my skin, like, scratch it real hard to see if it would come up, and it didn't come up. And right there, just, I was just wondering if you could uh, help me on that. Well, I mean, there could be many reasons for that. I mean, Remember, we were talking about earlier that the melanocytes act as black holes for this electromagnetic energy or photonic energy, which is called prana or chi or ki energy, which is also God, the all-pervading energy of the universe. So, I mean, it could have been that your melanocytes was was drawing in this energy, you know what I'm saying? And whatever you was doing, you might have been unconscious of it, but you might have consciously been doing some type of um, what would be considered a qigong Exercise, you know what I'm saying, for lack of a better term, or lack of a better um, um, explanation for the qigong, that is. Because the word qigong just simply means um, cultivating your energy or your life force energy. So it might have been some type of way that you was breathing, and you might have been doing it unconsciously, or whatever the case is. Um, The fact that you was outside also... Um, if there was no chemtrails in the sky, then that even give more weight to the fact of that possibility. Oh, okay, because I had went back to try to do a little uh, research on during those times. It, it happened to me twice. Uh, it happened to me in June, and it happened to me in uh, July. In those two months, they were talking about, you know, like certain comets, uh, certain alignments well, in the universe. Well, that's, that's energy. Right, that's what we was talking about earlier about the solar flare activity in which that is taking place. Um, you know, as we you know go through this photon belt, you know, from the fourth into the fifth dimension, and these third dimensional beings are trying to hold us down. You know, as we make the transition into the fifth dimension, because we will no longer be their slaves, because we are fourth dimensional entities anyway, and we've been held down by third dimensional beings. And the thing is, is that. Obviously, that is a reflection of you breaking that confine um, with the fact that you are twinkling because that means that you are actually going into the fifth dimension. That is a fifth-dimensional um, reality or fifth-dimensional impression in which that is taking place. Um, the fifth dimension deals with light, energy. So if you were glittering, you know, if it was glittering or you are glistening, you know, um, then I would say that I was dealing with the fifth dimensional um, aspect um, uh, instead of, um, you know, and that's the reason why I was taking place because it was no fact that during that time period, solar flare activity was um, massive during June and July. Oh, okay, yeah, because, man, it, it just tripped me out because I was just outside of the truck and I had called my partner over. I said, man, look, I said, look at me, man, like my arms and my hands, like everything, and I tried to wipe it off, and I said, man, I said, it's not moving. I was like, I don't know what this is, man, but, man, man I appreciate the info, man. I, I stay listening to you every Wednesday. I oh, appreciate that, Doc. All right, peace. All right, peace. All right, call it 302. Call it 302. You're on the line. Please, brother, I got one more question. This is Ty. All right. Um, to get back into the uh, third dimension, fourth dimension, um, when you're playing with a Ouija board, 
Are you actually tapping into entities from the fourth dimension? Fourth dimension, yes. Because you tap into your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind symbolizes the fourth dimension. Okay. In other words, these entities can draw through 50 gates, as it is said, um, through your subconscious mind into the conscious realm. Mm -hmm. These 50 gates are mentioned within the Necronomicon, um, as well as the own teachings, as well as within the Kabbalah. They're known as the 50 gates or portals or pathways or tunnels. And these entities can come through um, if they're not guarded properly. Okay. So this, okay. So if they're guarded properly, it would be safe. To use right, and they can't come through. Right. Okay. And see, in other words, um, before you even mess with the Ouija board, um, you would want to master something as simple as casting um, as dice, um, coins, um, tarot cards, you know, something like that. That's a little bit more simpler. Or a thousand. You know, once okay. you get past a thousand, then you can go into properly the Ouija board because you would have mastered components of your mind um, at that time. But a person who's just starting off trying to utilize the Ouija board, um, they might have problems. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I've heard about that. Right. That's peace. I, I appreciate that. Oh, no doubt. I appreciate you and appreciate all the listeners. Thank you all for listening. And um, we're getting ready to head out. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories.